Good morning. Welcome to Yakima Covenant Church and welcome to Advent 2021. Our theme this year is In Thy Dark Street Shines. And we want to look at uh, different lights that enter into the dark streets of uh, not only could, could be our own lives, but that of our own communities. We'll be looking at the everlasting light of hope, then the everlasting light of peace, the everlasting light of joy, as well as the everlasting light of love. This all is inspired by a card that I received uh, several years ago uh, from someone who was an artist of mine. Her name is Pat Oldham. It's a card that had a picture of a street that you see behind us that's been blown up with a, a, a box in front of it that's gift wrapped. And on the front it says, Yet in thy dark street shineth. She writes in there, We pray that in this dark year, the everlasting light of Jesus' great love might shine in your heart in your home. So welcome to Advent 2021. In thy dark street shines the everlasting light of Christ. Today we light the fourth Advent candle, known as the candle of the angels, bringing the light of love into our dark streets. The other lit candle represents the light of hope, peace, and joy. Let their light shine and overcome the darkness. Angels appear several times during the presentation for Jesus' birthday. They were the link between the divine and man, holy messengers. Initially, the angel Gabriel appeared to Zechariah and told him that his aging wife, Elizabeth, would bear a son, who were who were to be named John. John would fill the Holy Spirit and would pre prepare the people for the way of the Lord. Then the angel Gabriel reappeared six months later to Mary and told her that she would give birth to the Son of God, whom they were to name Jesus. Later still, an angel appeared to Joseph advising him of the same. Finally, the heavenly host of angels lit up the night sky, proclaiming to the shepherds that their Savior, Christ the Lord, had been born in a manger in Bethlehem. Jesus, too, was a holy messenger. He showed the supremacy of love by his example, his teaching, and his death. Listen to Jesus in Matthew 22, verses 36 to 40. One of the Pharisees tested Jesus with this question, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law 
and the prophets. Through his parables and preaching, Jesus taught us so much about how to love each other, about humility and loving our enemies, about generosity and forgiveness, about seeking the lost and knowing who our neighbor is. He showed us his love in multiple ways, such as healing the sick and feeding the crowds, including the outcast and calming the storm. Now consider the situation at Jesus' tomb three days after his crucifixion, which is described in Luke 24, verses 1 through 5. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find Jesus' body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the angel said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. The angels were announcing the resurrection of the living Lord to the mourning women. These two men were acting as holy messengers again, explaining God's plan for the redemption of the world. Jesus died so that those who believe in him would have eternal life and forgiveness of their sins. The true nature of God had been revealed, a nature of grace and love. Four candles burning bright, chasing away the darkness with light. Four candles glowing bright, the blessing of God giving new sight. The Apostle Paul, in his prayer for the Ephesians, concludes, I pray that you being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the saints to grasp how wide and how long and high and deep in the love of Christ. And you know the love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Let us pray. God of love, thank you for your love, which acts as a light in the darkness. Remind us during this Advent and Christmas season to abide in your great love for us, to rest in your love and to cherish it. Help us to love one another so that we Christians will be known for our love. Amen. Last week we drew our focus on Mary's song, A Joy in the Midst of a Cry for Justice. And today I want to look particular. I've been drawn to this to learn about the ways of God through Elizabeth and, and Mary and their relationship. It makes total sense that Mary would seek out Elizabeth after saying yes to God's initiative to be the bearer of a Savior. Elizabeth is a living member of the cloud of witnesses, someone whose faithfulness uh, can help steady the resolve of someone who has just made a, a huge life-altering decision, bigger than they could ever imagine. Well, do you have someone like that in your life? Elaine Stokey's book, Mary, points out Mary and Elizabeth are linked to a whole history of women in the scriptures. Uh, there's the Hebrew uh, midwives who conspire against Pharaoh. Uh, Miriam and Jochebed uh, conspire against the, the Egyptian princess to raise baby Moses. There's Ruth and Naomi 
Mary and Martha, Susanna and Joanna, Jesus' wealthy female supporters. Yodi and Syncate, who, while they worked faithfully to the gospel, they did have spats with each other. I think it's especially true of female relationships. They share strengths and vulnerabilities of being women, knowing often that without words what the other one is thinking, the emotions of the other one. Like many female relationships, you experience uh, an enriching interdependence, uh, deep cares for each other, receive gifts of understanding and love for each other. Well, this wonderful meeting of these two pregnant cousins, Mary and Elizabeth, touches the depths of women's partnerships throughout history. In this encounter, we hear um, the women's voices proclaim the mystery of faith. Mary, it says, entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Was Zechariah there, uh, sullen, mute, uh, sitting in the corner, unable to direct the theological discourse? Well, Elizabeth takes over, or maybe rather the fetus does. It leaps in her womb, and, and at the sight of her cousin Mary, unborn child, the child. You see the visceral kind of effect of this meeting. I think we've all seen those videos of military homecomings where they respond and deeply respond in, in ways that uh, they cry out or yell, a uncontrollably response. Well, that Mary does this, but Mary knew uh, that this was what this was all about. This baby jumping was because of the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth's response is an expression of the presence of the Holy Spirit and fills her. Elizabeth uh, and baby John uh, received knowledge from God about what was true, what was happening, uh, pointing out uh, things that unable to express about what was happening by faith, that there was this Messiah in the home, that this Messiah was in Mary's womb. Elizabeth is the first preacher in the book of Luke, ordained by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what she was spoken to her by her Lord. Elizabeth isn't offering a blessing to Mary. Elizabeth is recognizing Mary's state as blessed. Mary already had been blessed, part of the process of uh, saying yes to God and the angel Gabriel. Elizabeth was not offering her own words, but the words that were their own opinion of the drive and divine Holy Spirit on behalf of the Holy Trinity. Like the Father and the Spirit of John the Baptist at Jesus' baptism in Luke 3, Elizabeth is an agent of God making a statement that's already true. Twice Elizabeth highlights that the nature of this blessedness as coming from God a lasting power and effect upon Mary. If Mary came to Elizabeth with any doubts in her minds, any questions or fears, well, these time of hearing this from Elizabeth would have strengthened her and encouraged her. It, to even point out that, that Elizabeth, in her age, was pregnant. It surely quelled her fears and her doubts. In verse 43, uh, Elizabeth offers a personal response. Why me? How wonderful, amazing to be me, to meet the Savior of the world. The late Thomas Gillespie called this question awe-filled incredulity. Elizabeth is in awe. The blessing of God continues to be showered upon her. First becoming pregnant when she least would have expected it, uh, the blessing of, of she received. And now she realizes there's even greater things that are coming because from God's hand and to her and the whole world. If this was a playing of words and today, it would probably be, how lucky am I? Elizabeth goes on to say, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by her Lord. Mary's blessed because of her faith, her trust in God, Mary believes in the promises of God, promises that this will, there will bring pain and sorrow, but it will bring salvation to the world. 
it seems to me, even if Elizabeth was speaking about Mary, was speaking out of her own personal experience of being blessed, believing impossible is possible with God, choosing to live by faith despite the circumstances of being old, uh, being unable to prove that this is a miracle and that it is just that, the, the work of God. Elizabeth's words are not just true for Mary, but Elizabeth herself. They are true for herself. They are true for anyone. Anyone. Anyone who chooses to stand firm with faith. Anyone who stands on the promises of our God. Anyone who turns their eyes towards heaven, anxiously await the fulfillment of things to come. Merely had truly come to the right place to be encouraged, to be strengthened, to, to walk in obedience and, as she had sum, submitted herself to. Uh, what a great place, the right place, because Mary was sought out a fellow sojourner, a partner, a soul friend, one who was always, also submitted to the presence of God, one who lived by all fulfilling the promises of God as a, as a giver, promise giver, but one who was going to be a promise keeper. May it be for us. May we join in saying yes to God's plan. May we say yes, stepping out in faith. And may we find others to come alongside us and support us. And we support them. May you be an agent of God's kingdom. May you be an agent of bringing God's good news to those around you. And may we do it in partnership. May we do it in support of each other. We need each other these days, especially these days. Let's bow in prayer. God, we give you thanks for Mary and Elizabeth, for their incredible faith, their incredible sense of trusting in being a part of your plan to be used. God, we give you thanks for their challenging uh, example of seeking out each other for support and encouragement. Father, we pray for your blessing as we look forward to uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day where we celebrate your coming. God, may we live by faith today, looking forward to your second coming. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.